Welcome to Discover Christian Church. We're so glad you're here. Our mission is to love God, love people, and impact the world. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Great. It's great to see you guys. Thank you if you're joining us here in the building um, or if you're joining us online. Um, we are very excited to be together in this first Sunday of the new year, the year 2022, which I don't know. It's one of those things I know with COVID and everything, it seems like time has just become like nebulous. But suddenly it's 2022, which I don't know about you, but it feels like what? What happened to 2021? I don't know. Whatever. Here we go. All right, um, but we're excited um, about what God is doing. God is providing uh, renewed energy in his body, not just here at Discover, but I think throughout the world. God is providing new vision for his church. He's providing new momentum, and he's providing hope. He's renewing a lot of things, and it's very exciting to be uh, just watching and, and somehow be used by God for part of that. <clears throat> um, there's a, a park... Um, over on Hard Road, and in this park, there's a, a tree. It's an old tree. Check out this tree. That's a picture of it on the left side there. Um, I don't know exactly how old it is, but it's somewhere between, like, around 125 years old. It's an old, old tree. And um, every time we go walking in this park, we're like, man, that, that tree is really cool. Now, the, the tree on the right side is slightly older. Um, the tree, it's a, a bristlecone pine, it's in California. It's actual location, and I'm not even sure if that's the exact one. They said it was, but it's hidden. The Park Service will not let people know where it is because they're afraid that you know, people will do too many things to it that would be problematic. Anyway, the, the tree is na nicknamed Methuselah. Are you ready for how? Some of you guys may know this. The tree is 4,850 years old. What? 4,850 years old. Man, that thing's just a puppy, right? <laughs> but, but the way they know that, of course, is they know how many rings are on the tree, right? And they took a core, somebody took a core sample like in the 50s of that tree. Good thing it didn't die, right? <laughs> but um, so that tree is really, really old. But trees grow from the inside out, and each ring marks another year of life. Well, we're at a new ring, right? Here we go. Um, in a way, we're kind of like trees. You know, we need to be renewed. And the renewal that we need the most comes from the inside out, and that renewal comes from God. And as we enter this new year, um, we're going to be talking about how God makes everything new. The series is All Things New. Starting next week, we're going to talk about prayer, having renewed prayer. The week after that, renewed wonder, when we can just... Think about life and God with a little more mystery. The idea of renewed priorities is pretty common at the beginning of a year. We're also going to talk about renewed thinking and how we need to have our minds renewed by God. But today we're going to start in this new series by talking about renewed strength. Renewed strength. We're going to look at our memory verse, everybody together. Then we're going to uh, look at Isaiah chapter 40, just a few verses there. <clears throat> and then we're going to hear some other encouraging verses from God. So as we begin, why don't we say this memory verse together? This is our memory verse for the month. And if you're perceptive, you'll notice it's two verses. So, but it's a five Sunday month, so you've got an extra week. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah 43, 19 and 19. Thank you guys so much. Um, <clears throat> this verse 
uh, is God speaking. God is saying that. And that's encouraging. Well, a few chapters earlier in the same book in Isaiah, God is speaking, ooh, again. <laughs> and God uh, has some things that are important to us. Starting in verse 20, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will not walk and not be faint. So this is God speaking to us through his word, and he's saying, listen, you need to understand all of these things. It's very important. Like if I wrote this out, you'd be like, okay, whatever. If you wrote it, you know, whatever. But this is God speaking to us through his word. And if you look at verse 28, it's really interesting. It says, do you not know? Don't you know this? Haven't you heard this? And the answer is obvious. Well, yes. These, these things are known. These things have been heard. But unfortunately, even as followers of Jesus, sometimes we have forgotten these things. These things are known, they've been heard, but they've also been forgotten. And God is shaking us and saying, remember. Remember who I am. I am everlasting. I am the creator. I am untiring. I am all-knowing, and I'm the provider. And I will give strength and hope and power to the weak when it's most needed. Now, who is this being said to? Who is this book, who is Isaiah written to? Well, in a very specific sense, it's written to the Jewish people. But globally, this is saying anyone, anyone who, who hopes in God, any person who is weak, anyone who is weary, anyone who is worn out, anyone who is just plain done people like you people like me people throughout the world people who need strength and hope you know the bible is is so cool in so many ways one of the things i love about it is it doesn't pull any punches like the bible is just saying here's a reality check even young people get tired. Even strong people get worn out. It doesn't matter who you are. And I don't know about you, but right now I feel a little bit older and a little more worn out than I've felt for a while. And so God says again in verse 31, would you look to me and I will renew your strength. And that's what we need to do. Now let's look at this word hope here in this version. In the NIV it's translated hope. There's a, it's a Hebrew word. <clears throat> in Hebrew the word is kawe. And the English translation is typically wait or trust or hope. And all three of those words capture a little bit of that meaning of that original word. And, and that's one of the things, that we've, as we've said before, translation is tricky, right? And as this week, um, I saw a video of a company who sponsored one of the bowl games. Check this out. There is a landfill in the ocean. Bring your visit to outdated Monte Pisa. Our sights will take your breathing away. Our food will make your mouth leak. And our roads will make you break wind. <laughs> Translation is complex. Transperfect makes it simple. All right, so thank you, Transperfect, for that wonderful illustration. I thought that was really cool. All right, 
so again, each of these three words is part of this original Greek or Hebrew word. And, and we have to get to all three of them really to understand it better. So let's just do that. Let's talk about each of the words in, in English. The first one is wait. And the context is one of my favorite things. It's patience. Yay. <laughs> Yay, patience. But beyond just patience, the, the idea of this word includes a dependence on God. It's waiting, but it's also being dependent, having patience. And if you're like me, you really aren't excited about patience. You don't pray the prayer for patience anymore. You don't do that. You've done that, and you're like, God really wanted to give that to me, I guess. So. And if you're an impatient person, it's tricky. It's hard. But listen, nine women can't make a baby in a month. Some of you are going, what? <laughs> one woman makes a baby in nine months. You can't put nine women together and say, each of you do one-ninth of this. It's not how it works. We have to be patient. We need to wait. And, and that is actually something that helps us to gain strength in God. Psalm 5.3 says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. I think some key words in this verse are in the morning. Now, I am not a morning person. I'm actually a night person, but over the years, life has just made me have to be a morning person. But one of the things that's helpful is if you begin your day, whatever time that is, by coming to God. In the morning, I, I come to you, Lord. And then I actually physically speak to you. I lay my request. I actually tell you, God, what, what I need. And then I leave it in your hands. The day is yours, God. I lay it before you, and then I just wait. But I wait with expectation because you are God and not me. So that first part of it is that waiting. But that waiting is based, again, on trust. It's based on dependence on God. It's a faith. It's confidence. The idea behind this word is the same thing that is what motivates you to drive your car over a bridge that you didn't build. It's, well, I trust the people that built that bridge. I trust that that's going to be fine. And, and it's that confidence that you almost don't even think about it. You just keep moving. Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And if you think about the history of the Jewish people as they came out of Egypt, they came to the Red Sea, right? And, and uh-oh, there's a problem. They can't go forward, and the Egyptian army is coming at them with their horses and their chariots. And yet God powerfully, miraculously made it possible for them to cross over. And then those chariots and those horses that the Egyptians were trusting in, those all went away. We need to trust in the name of the Lord our God. We, we wait and we trust. And that waiting that's based on trust actually creates the third part of this, which is hope. Now, when we were learning Spanish in Costa Rica, everybody started, we were in the same class. I took two years of high school Spanish, Teresa took French, and we were in the same class in Costa Rica. That tells you how good my Spanish was, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, we were in class, and you just learn present tense, 
to start, you know, when you're learning vocabulary and verbs. And conjugations were not even part of our world at that point, except present tense conjugations. And so somebody came up with the idea that if you needed to talk about something you did yesterday, you went like this. And if you needed to talk about something you were going to do, you went like this. So this is future tense, right? Well, someone said his name was Peter Anderson. He, he made, an, I thought, a really powerful observation. He said, hope is faith in future tense. Isn't that good? Hope is faith in future tense. In other words, when you have faith, when you trust in God in the future, that's the same thing as hope. That's all that hope is. See, hope, and when we think of it in our typical context in our world, hope is like this wishful thinking. That's not the biblical context of hope at all. Hope is a complete confidence as much as you would trust anything in this moment, you would trust God in the future, and that's just called hope. It's the future tense of faith. It's beautiful. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God has so much hope. He is the God of hope, and he will fill you with hope as you wait on him, as you trust in him. And that hope will not only fill you, it will overflow. Not because of anything you've done, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let this beautiful, powerful truth renew you from the inside out. As we wait on the Lord, as we trust in the Lord, as we hope in the Lord, God renews our strength provides whatever we need to be victorious each day. And so let's look at what God says specifically here. First, God says, this strength will allow you to soar. Now, God created some really cool large birds. Like you can go to the Columbus Zoo and see a lot of them. They're pretty neat. Uh, pelicans are cool, ostriches, flamingos, and penguins. Those are neat, but I got to tell you, they are not eagles. There's something about an eagle and the soaring ability of that bird. It's so majestic. Jesus said that God brought the children of Egypt, or the children of Israel, out of Egypt on wings of eagles. The Bible mentions eagles 32 times. That's a lot. Eagles soar, they, they rise up on currents of air. And that's the illustration that God wants to give us. He's saying, when, when you soar, I am the one who's lifting you up. Now you might be thinking, <clears throat> soaring? Are you kidding? I can't soar. I'm so stuck where I am. Listen to Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. No matter what your circumstances are, <clears throat> God can lift you up. And, and when you've been in a slimy pit, rescue feels just like soaring, doesn't it? When we hope in God, our spiritual life soars. Next, God's strength allows us to run. God's strength can empower us to run without wearing out. Now, how great is it to be able to run without getting tired? Like, you see little kids, and they just keep going, right? And you're like, give me some of that energy. I need some of that, right? They just keep going and going. But most of us, we wear out physically, right? Right? Now, there's a lady named Alyssa Clark, and in 2020, when the pandemic first hit, she's a marathon runner, and all the marathons were canceled. And so she decided she was going to do a marathon a day. You heard right, a marathon a day. And she did it for 95 consecutive days. 95 days running 26 point whatever miles every day. And, and you, you might think, 
How is that possible? And when I think of it, I say, why would you do that? People have questions. But there are times in life when we need to run and we need God's strength to be able to keep going. And that strength comes as the Holy Spirit encourages us. That strength comes from knowing Jesus finished the race and we can put our eyes on him and we can also miraculously recognize he's running with us simultaneously. And we are also encouraged by the people around us who are cheering us on. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, these words come to us. Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Susan wanted her brother Jeffrey to be able to participate in a school activity. And since her parents also run with Jeffrey, cross-country just makes sense for them. And so every practice and every meet, Susan pushes Jeffrey in his wheelchair. So when she's running uphill or on uneven terrain and it gets hard, Susan says she pushes away the pain and focuses on him enjoying it. And she also says, hearing everyone screaming and cheering gives me a big adrenaline rush. And Susan just keeps going, keeps moving forward. She's strengthened by others. And by design, God uses people in his family to encourage us as well. And for us to encourage others. And so, are you looking only to be encouraged? Are you looking only to receive from others? Or are you saying... How can I be an encouragement to those who are running this race as well? God's strength helps us to soar and to run and to walk. God's strength allows us to walk. Now, do not underestimate the power of walking. I mean, it sounds kind of like it's regressive, doesn't it? It's like soaring and running and walking. But I have to tell you, walking should not be underestimated. Physically, walking every day is like one of the healthiest things you can do. And that's true spiritually. Walking with God each day, just, just walking with the Lord, man, that is an incredible testimony. And it's actually what God says he wants from us. In Micah 6, 8, God says, here's what I want from you. I want you to act justly. I want you to love mercy. And I want you to walk humbly with me. He doesn't say, I want you to soar with me. I want you to run with me. God says, would you walk with me? One of my favorite Bible characters is a man named Enoch. And when we were in Costa Rica, in our conversation class, we had to describe a Bible character, and I thought, I can use this guy because like, his, his testimony is like, really short. It's like we don't know much about Enoch, but what we do know is he walked with God, and then he was no more. And I was like, I can probably get that out in Spanish, so I used him. I didn't do so well. But anyway, the point of Enoch's life is incredible. Imagine at your funeral, at your memorial service, they would say, you know, Joe walked with God. Sarah walked with God. And then God took him away. God took her away. <sighs> That's pretty amazing. That's exactly what God wants from us, to just walk with him. And the key word there is to walk with there are times when God says, I want you to walk before me. That doesn't necessarily sound good because what that is is I'm going to examine you as you walk before me. There are times when God says, I want you to walk behind me, and that's where we follow, and that's a good thing to do. But there's something about walking with. 
with is powerful. I just got done with 10 days of isolation. 10 days when, when instead of our family coming in and spending Christmas and New Year's celebrations together, I was in a room for 10 days. And I have to tell you, as much as like the first 24 hours wasn't too bad, you know, I was like, I could deal with this. People bringing me food, you know, I can make this work. You guys know that at some point, not having with becomes a problem. God designed us to be with him, to be with each other. And that's how things are renewed by being with God and letting him renew our strength. You know, 2021 had a few challenges. Guess what? 2022 will have some as well. And some of us are facing them right now. And we all need to be renewed. And maybe, maybe you've been looking other places to try and find this renewal, this, this thing that will make you feel better to, to, to move forward and... It's not been God. It's been something else. And if you've been doing that, then you've undoubtedly experienced the letdown that that thing has done. It's not provided the hope that you wanted. It's not provided the strength that you wanted. It hasn't provided the fulfillment that you wanted. In fact, it's been unfulfilled promises that you've experienced. And honestly, you're not growing inside. You're kind of withering and dying. And you know it. And God knows it. And so if there's something that you've been running after to try and give you fulfillment and renewal, would you just let go of that and hold on to God? And maybe you've never actually even said to God, I need to let go of all this stuff that I've been chasing, and I need to give my life back to you, and I need to have Jesus wash me and cleanse me, and let the blood of Jesus just make my life new. If you've never done that, and you're in the building, you can do that after we listen to some scriptures, and um, as we sing, you can come up front. And if you're online joining us, um, would you reach out to somebody who is a follower of Jesus and let them help you begin that journey with Jesus together. And we certainly would love to help do that with you. The strength of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit allows us to soar like eagles above our circumstances. The strength of God the Father of God the Son, of God the Holy Spirit, allows us to run with supernatural endurance. The strength of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit allows us to walk each day and not get worn out. When we wait on God, when we trust in God, when we hope in the Lord, then God renews our strength. So right now, if you are able, would you please stand? The Bible is full of all kinds of verses that are designed to strengthen us, and we're going to listen to some of those verses right now. We want to start by one more time saying our memory verse together. Would you say this with us? And remember, this is God speaking to your heart. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past See, I am doing a new thing. It springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And now we just invite you to close your eyes and allow the word of God and the spirit of God to speak truth and blessing over your life. Be strong and take heart all you who hope in the Lord. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. 
When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 